created new posts in the school as a school psychologist and provided support services through in-person and online platform. You've also emphasized on meta skills, thinking about thinking, learning to learning, emotional regulation, goal-oriented skills, empathic skills that are most crucial to recover from learning loss, be adaptive to evolving society. Under Digital Nation Initiative, Digital Literacy for All national program has been implemented through formal, informal, and non-formal learning. Actions to scale up citizens' digital skill. The digital devices one, digital divide is one of the major challenges for Mongolia for promote digital nation initiative. In this regard, government of Mongolia has been making effort to eliminate digital divide in cooperation of PPP models, private public partnership. Regarding, regarding education financing, the research community has expressed that unit cost estimated needs to be carried out in order to enhance efficiency in education sector. By 20, 2020, 20, by 2022, education financing has reached 5% of GDP, as well as 15% of physical budget. National Open Platform for Students and Teachers also established and now been used over a million users, including students. This platform enables all children and youth to access lessons of the best quality teachers in the country, regardless where they live. The stakeholders in consultation jointly agreed that the platform promoted inclusive and equal opportunity of learning for all children and youth. I would like to conclude national consultation held within framework on transforming education initiative of UN Secretary General has been organized, ongoing discussions on adopting amendment of education laws in my countries. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share, to share our ideas, learn from colleagues from different countries on transforming education in this crucial and critical moment. At the end, there is Mongolian well-known proverb, time is not always the same, the grass not always green, thus education must be transformed. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Our next speaker is the distinguished Honorary Minister of Education, Science and Technology in Nepal. Thank you, Your Excellencies, the Minister, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express this national commitment on behalf of the government of Nepal and the stakeholder that are engaged in the Nepal school education sector, including development partners, civil society, teachers, professional organization, UN agencies, academic academia, duty barriers, and the children and youth, as well as their parents and teachers. Nepal wishes to express its commitment to, firstly, to undertake a comprehensive analysis of the learning, loss in the allocate and the leverage adequate additional resources to allow children to catch up reach or return to an, an age-appropriate learning level. As part of this recovery roadmaps, Nepal commit to making additional financing and the programming available to reach children who are badly affected in the learning process due to the pandemics. Nepal future commit to strengthening the education sector to emerge better from the pandemic by scaling up remedial teaching and the accelerated learning programs. Secondly, to put teacher at the center of the transforming the Nepal education system. For this, Nepal commits to invest in the professional development and the human resources system in the education sector to 
produce and maintain competent and the motivated teachers. Realizing the teachers and the most important determinant of the learning outcomes, Nepal commits to undertake reform to attract new teachers and continue their professional developments. Thirdly, to support the adaptation of the national education target and the benchmark into local level education sector plans. For this, Nepal will de develop a comprehensive framework to support its local government as per their need to establishing resilience education system in place that enable them to provide inclusive and the quality education and cater to the need of the children in their commitment and the context. Finally, to increase public financing for the education to meet the commitment and the global benchmark of 20% by 2030. In order to meet this commitment, it is clear that increased resources are the most, must commit to the continue increasing the share of the education budget in its national and the sub-national budget to reach and the maintaining the global benchmark of 20% before 2030. To achieve this goal, national consultation, consultation has been initiated and the will continue for the months to come to further specially contextualize and the validate these commitment for them to the presented at the global summit in September there is thank you thank you your excellency and all the other speakers uh, i will now ask you all to please uh, make your way off the stage thank you very much We have had a very inspiring statement uh, from uh, education ministers across the world about um, the work they're doing in their countries to transform education. Um, I hope this set a great uh, promise to an exciting lead up to the Transform Education Summit in September, and also a prosperous path toward the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In the lead up to the summit, youth from across the world were invited to share the innovative ideas on what they have done or what they hope to do to transform education in their communities. Before the next part of this session, we will have, we have compiled some of the videos young people sent to us to hopefully remind us why we are here in Paris to exchange ideas and practices and to hear from the voices of young people. Uh, there will be a five minute video that will play and then for the next part, I'll pass the floor to my wonderful colleague, Ms. Aldis. Holtz, who will moderate the next portion of the program. Thank you very much. Miladi Salami. I'm 24 years old. I currently live in the United Kingdom. Transforming education means empowering learners and preparing them for the future of work and planetary sustainability by mainstreaming education for sustainable development into our curricula. Education for sustainable development gives learners the values, skills, and agency to address the interconnected global challenges in the world. So it is very important that we make our curricula fit for the future of work so as to empower young people to be agents of change. Hello, my name is Cody Freeman. I'm 30 years old and I'm here in Bangkok, Thailand. Transforming education means creating a world where LGBTQI plus youth are free. And we do that by having an inclusive curriculum, building spaces free from violence, bullying and discrimination, and fostering networks of parents, teachers, admin and policymakers in order to cultivate better mental health and a greater sense of belonging. Bonjour, je m'appelle Coraline, j'ai 25 ans. 
Hello, my name's Coralie. I'm 27 years old and I'm from France. Today, knowledge is available everywhere through the internet. Schools should therefore offer us more than that and should educate us in the human values and social skills that we all need, regardless of our path. I'm talking, for instance, about empathy, inclusion, resilience, everything that will allow us to become the best version of ourselves, to better collaborate and to better serve the common good. That's why today I'm working to create workshops on these concepts. Hello, everyone. My name is Nial Deng. I'm a South Sudan refugee writer and community activist. I spent 11 years in the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya and I now attend college in Canada. For young refugees like myself, education is the most powerful tool that we can use to secure a more full and brighter future, not just for ourselves and for our communities. As we build momentum toward the Transforming Education Summit and ensuring that we achieve SDG 4 by 2030, let's commit to leaving no child behind and ensure that every child everywhere can have access to safe and quality education. Education is hope empowerment and progress. For every child, everywhere, a chance to learn. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Joan. I am 13 years old. I am Korean, but I live in Tunisia. I am a homeschooler. So how do I study at home in Tunisia? Well, I am going to talk about the digital education. The cool thing about it is that people like me can assess any resources if there is an internet. Thanks to digital apps, I can study with friends from other continents. Hello, my name is Veronica Bella Hingis. People call me Bella. I would like to discuss teachers and the teaching profession. As a math teacher, I'm aware that to educate students, you design human beings. Right now, students are learners, but in the future, they are leaders, executives, professionals, or more. So it's important for them to develop learning agility. We must help them to prepare it and to improve that. How? By guiding them how to learn, adapt, unlearn, and relearn. Pour pouvoir transformer l'éducation, nous devons nous assurer que in order to transform education, we have to ensure that our schools are protected from the threats of climate change. Extreme weather and natural disasters, such as cyclones and rainstorms, are a constant threat to learning environments, especially in small island developing states. I urge you today to act now for our children of tomorrow so that they may learn everywhere in a safe and healthy environment. People who submitted those videos, including my co-moderator Nihal, thank you for moderating the first session. Honourable Ministers, Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the second part of the pre-summit ministerial roundtable. My name is Hulda Solst. I'm a teacher and I'm General, Deputy General Secretary of Education International, the Global Union Federation for Unions in the Education Sector. Transformation means fundamental changes to educational processes and opportunities worldwide. Transforming education means going beyond reforms that improve our education systems and our educational practices. Rather than better versions of existing systems, transformation results in education systems different from today. Transforming education also means supporting teaching and learning that is transformative for learners. Transformative education empowers as it connects people to each other and the world, exposes them to new possibilities and strengthens their capacities for critique, dialogue, knowledge creation, and action. As a teacher, 
I want all students to be able to influence their education. I am convinced that including young people and teachers in the conversation on how to transform education is key to ensuring we find the right tools. In the following part of the session, we will hear reflections from countries on what features of education are most important to continue, strengthen and or safeguard. We look forward to hearing what in current education policy and practice needs to be abandoned. Also, we have asked the speakers to provide innovative approaches identified that can serve as levers for game-changing transformations of education policy and practice. And with that, I would now like to welcome the first ministers to join me on the stage. And these are the distinguished ministers of Niger, Sao Tome and Principe, Seychelles, South Sudan, and Togo. Please join me on stage. was a bit optimistic there. No ministers here to join me on the stage, but that means that we have time left. So I have the opportunity to invite some vice ministers and deputy ministers to speak. And I thought that I would invite them one by one on the stage. We may be lucky and some more ministers may come because we are a little bit ahead of schedule here. But I hope protocol will allow me then to go further and go to the deputy ministers. So I would like to ask whether the deputy minister of education, science, culture and sport of the Republic of Armenia is here. Fantastic, and the distinguished minister, please come to the stage and uh, give their statement. Thank you. Distinguished colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to represent Armenia at this panel discussion, and I want to take the opportunity and thank UNESCO for hosting this very important event. Actually, the discussions on education transformation that are taking place globally with these sessions also here and with the UNESCO summit uh, come right on time for Armenia, as our country is currently in active stage of educational reforms and in decision making on the development of education for the next 10 years, up to 2030. I'm sure that the national consultations that we are currently holding, as well as the reflections here from these sessions will make through our participation in these sessions, we will eventually enable us to streamline all key elements of transformational approach in all the key documents that currently are on the table. And hence, it will secure that our education policy policies embrace the key ideas and thoughts for securing transformational education. Amid the national consultations that are currently being placed, and by the way, we will have the major stage in the upcoming uh, week or two, I can already state that there are a couple of elements that stand at the backbone of our vision for educational reforms and transformational education. 
this is all about the following. So accent on skills, attitude, values, and uh, no, on top of the knowledge. Here, the skills can imply both to diverse types of literacy, such as like media literacy, cyber literacy, financial literacy, etc., as well as key assets that shape the attitude of learners, like the active citizenship, care towards the mother nature, etc. A learner-centric and rights-based approach. All should have access to quality education regardless of their age and regardless of their geographic location. This is about the uh, right to education for learners in remote and isolated areas of the country that is our priority to secure. Uh, no one should be left behind. We should secure the right to education and the continuity of education regardless of political conflicts and crisis situation. Here I want to refer uh, to the words of Madame Azoulay in the, early in this morning, so that like children in Nagorno-Karabakh should have the right to education. Of course, we are not uh, in active stage of conflict that was unleashed uh, by Azerbaijan back in 2020, in fall 2020, but still uh, we should do uh, all our best to secure the right to education for the learners in Nagorno-Karabakh, regardless how long it will take to find a solution to the conflict itself. Increased adaptability of educational system to address the labor market demands, uh, which means the adaptability of the educational programs that are typically uh, more conservative. Accent on uh, strengthening the usage of technology in education. Result-oriented approach, which means more and more space for teachers, educators, educators educational staff, and institutions to apply innovation in their everyday learning process. Interrelations with the external world, so being locally rooted but also globally informed. Uh, constant dialogue with key stakeholders, not just the state stakeholders but also the civil society and the youth particularly. As it means like increased and this approach, uh, this appro by uh, proportion, disproportionate uh, in a positive sense, financing to education. So Armenia has increased its uh, budget allocations to education, and this is the trend we are going to follow uh, in the next years to come. Uh, we should understand, after all, that the ex expenditure in education, this is not just a budget allocation, but this is investment to sustainable uh, development, inclusive growth, and resilient society. We are determined to continue consultations with all our key stakeholders in Armenia and out of Armenia, all development partners, uh, and of course, first of all, with the youth to make sure that we identify the right areas for, uh, for, uh, for change. So for, <clears throat> for change, and I hope that by September, uh, during the September summit, we will have already a full list of commitments that we are going, uh, going to take and follow. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> thank you, Your, Ex your Excellency, and thank you also for being ready and willing to speak at such uh, short notice. I would now like to call the Distinguished Deputy Minister of Education from Ghana. So the stage is yours. Thank you very much, the Vice President of Education International. Your Excellencies, colleagues, and friends, I'm excited to share Ghana's intervention in transforming education and remediation that we have conducted for learning losses that were occasioned by COVID-19. In Ghana, we are leapfrogging inequality, and we are reimagining education, focusing on outcomes and transforming the education system to deliver education 4.0 for industry 4.0. 
in addressing learning losses occasioned by COVID and some fundamental challenges that were evident even before the advent of COVID, we have undertaken some innovative and outcome-driven interventions to cure learning poverty and ensure learners acquire functional literacy and numeracy skills. National Reading Radio Program and Digital Learning were deployed as some of the interventions at the peak of COVID to ensure that learners did not mismatch. And in also, um, as an attempt to address learning poverty, we administered the latter part of last year a standardized test, national standardized test across the public schools we have in the country. Uh, we administered the first bite to P4 learners. That is to ensure that we get the weaknesses at learner level in literacy and numeracy. We are the final stages of the resource analysis, and that is giving us indication where we must course correct in the next academic year. The current government's free senior high school policy and the free, uh, free school feeding program, the pre tertiary education competency-based curriculum and the standard-based curriculum, retooling of technical and vocational education and training at all levels, and many gender and equality in education initiatives are a few of the examples of interventions that we are busy with. At the tertiary level, we have made strides to integrate 21st century learning skills and competencies into the curriculum and the promotion of entrepreneurship in education. In Ghana, we have established STEM schools at various levels and in particular senior high schools in recent years. And this is to demonstrate government's commitment and the, the determination to transform education and attain improved human capital. The Ghanaian culture promotes community engagement and this is evident in the Maiden Transforming Education National Consultation meeting held on the 16th of June this year in Accra. The forum brought together 115 face-to-face -face participants and 78 virtual participants from all 16 regions of the country. Youth representation and engagement at the forum was impressive. Five breakout sessions led by internationally selected facilitators discussed each of the five transforming education summit thematic action tracks. During the plenary, participants offered reflections and thoughts that offered the national convener and his team valuable information and feedback as a first step towards the selection of Ghana's thematic action track, synthesizing the thoughts and reflections led to the questions, to what end do all the thematic action tracks aim at? Responses from many participants pointed to one significant answer, to develop learners and graduates with the requisite 21st century skills and competencies needed to thrive. In closing, I wish to reiterate the commitment of Ghana to the transformative actions contained in the ministerial communique earlier agreed upon at the pre-summit and indicates strongly that we remain committed to the ideals and aspirations of the United Nations Secretary General's Transforming Education Summit Initiative. Together, we will and we must transform education to recover pandemic-related learning losses, to reimagine education for today's world and tomorrow's world, and to revitalize national and global efforts to achieve sustainable development to go for. I thank you very much for your attention. And thank you, Your Excellency. Our next speaker is a distinguished Deputy Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia, who will also speak on behalf of the G20 countries. And after her, if I can, so I can give forewarning, that I can ask Kazakhstan to be ready as the next speaker. Distinguished ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the ministers of education, culture, research and technology of the Republic of Indonesia, please accept our gratitude for the invitations to participate in this important event and to talk today about our effort to transform education that were also discussed during the national consultations. Ensuring uh, inclusive and equitable quality education and promoting 
the uh, lifelong learning for all as outlined in SDGs uh, goal four is the core of our approach to transforming education. Through Merdeka Belajar or Emancipated Learning Policy, we are bringing learners' unique strengths and need to the forefront of our education policy. In addition to strengthening our commitment to allocate at least 20% of the national budget for education, the Indonesian government has reformed funding across all levels of education from the equitable and fair distributions of school funds at primary and secondary education to higher education scholarships, provide grants to join research by industry and universities, and postulate education's endowment fund in line with Action Strike 5. We have also transformed vocational education by enhancing collaborations between the world of education and the business and industrial sectors in line with the action strike of two. Business and industry now have greater input to the designs of curriculums, to the provisions of instructors, and up to learning assessment. This innovative action uh, is supported by our two special fund, competitive and matching fund. And to further encourage the involvement of industry, the government of Indonesia since 2019 issued so-called tax deductions incentive of 200 percent for business organizations that carry out vocational uh, activities. The new ministry has also changed the punitive and high-stake testings of the national exams into the national assessment, which now evaluates the foundational uh, competence of literacy, numeracy, and characters. This is supported by the development of a new curriculum focused on the students' abilities and needs while developing their goals and community perspective. Our commitment to uh, Action Track 1 is also further shown by the work of the Ministry in combating bullying, sexual violence, and also intolerance in education. To meet the needs for qualified teachers in line with Action uh, Track 3, the Ministry has launched the Guru Penggerak or Master Teachers programs and introduced new regulations regarding teachers' recruitment and also professional development. These changes are focused on improving the quality of teachers' trainings and mentoring. Online platforms have also been developed to support learners and teachers to study, administer learnings, and also manage school finance. Among other initiatives in line with Action Track 4, the Ministry recently launched its Merdeka Mengajar or Emancipated Teaching Platform as a medium to share materials, to share lesson plan, and also best practices. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as Indonesia has the honor to the uh, G20 presidency, allow me also to share the commitment of the members of G20 Education Working Group to transform education. Inspired by the themes of this G20's uh, Recover Together, Recover Stronger, the member countries will work hand in hand to emerge stronger and more resilient from the challenges imposed by COVID-19. Currently, we are also working on a report and compendium that captures good practices from the G20 member countries in transforming and improving their education system. There are four priority agendas that guide the discussions in the G20 Education Working Group. They are universal quality education, digital technologies in education, solidarity and partnerships, and the future of work post-COVID-19 are all in line with the five action tracks in the Transforming Education Summit. We sincerely hope that the valuable experience and initiative from the G20 member countries could be shared in the Transforming Education Summit in September and will inspire uh, us all to recover together, recover stronger, to create a more equitable and sustainable future for all of us. It has always been our commitment to build bridges, to be part of the solutions, and to promote the spirit of cooperation. We invite you all to join us in that endeavor. We look forward to a successful education summit in New York. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Your Excellency. And as notified, our next speaker is the Distinguished Vice Minister of Higher Education and Science of Kazakhstan, and I would like the Republic of Serbia to uh, get ready next.
Dear ministers, vice ministers, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Minister of Science and Higher Education of Republic of Kazakhstan, let me greet you all at this very important meeting, Transforming Education pre Summit. Today, Kazakhstan is included in the group of countries with a high level of human development index and occupies 51st position among 189 participating countries. Kazakhstan ranked 35th in 2021 World Competitive Ranking by the rising seven points higher compared to 2020 among 64 countries. The past um, couple of years was really challenging for all sectors of economy and especially for the education system. And there are a lot of lessons that we have learned for these last past two years that we should consider while we're working on this uh, very important doc document, Transforming Education Strategies uh, till 2030, and that will be presented and adopted later this year in September. The education system around the world is undergoing major changes, and including Kazakhstan. And the, for the pandemic years, we have seen that uh, the higher education was the, the most prepared for these uh, challenging situations. And when we look back, um, there are many challenges that I would like to mention a couple of them. So one of the things that uh, important to talk about that higher education was one of the well-prepared. It has a really good infrastructure. Uh, LMS system was in place. You know, the teachers had a needed uh, sort of um, cyber pedagogy skills. And the, what they did, they really were able to scale up to the whole country. But when we look back, we see that um, having technological you know, support and resources was not enough. And one of the challenges that our country faces is that um, problem with the internet and the poor internet connection. Um, so as you, we can imagine that teachers are ready, LMS systems are in place, However, the knowledge and the needed um, information doesn't receive, uh, doesn't go to the uh, end receiver, the students. And also another important point that we have learned that the, it's very important uh, that uh, economic status of the households is also something which should be always, should always consider. Uh, as we can see that families um, uh, may have not, uh, have the needed, like, you know, technical uh, resources, like, you know, the laptops and the uh, cell phones and other, you know, needed um, devices. So that's why we, when we think about transforming education around the world for the next decade, we should, uh, we, and when we pursue the high-tech solutions, like, you know, the digital uh, technologies, we need to consider the readiness of communities, the households, you know, financial situation and abilities to, um, to, you know, to be able to receive the knowledge and uh, follow those recommendations that we will come up later on this year. Another, another um, thing that I would like to share and that we have learned for the past year that um, the, um, the teachers, the students, uh, um, students' perception of education has changed. And then it's sort of the pandemic sort of reset the whole understanding of what's the education, how we can approach to this. And it even uh, opened an opportunity for us to adopt a law for the digital universities, you know, online um, universities is something that will be coming up in Kazakhstan. Uh, before that, it was, people couldn't even understand how we can learn online, how that possible. Now everything is uh, sort of, fresh, people are ready to do so. Um, so, and this is really good opportunity for us as a whole community, you know, to set the goals that really will be achievable and uh, that will transform the education system in the right direction. Another point that I would like to say that we, we have learned that the education uh, is not just about knowledge, teaching and learning. It's also about the student's social life. It's about well-being. 
Uh, this is the place, the school and the high, uh, universities are the place where people get the soft skills, they, they, they become a, a mature, they become a, a part of the community. And that's why when we're talking about digital universities and all these high-tech uh, approaches to the education, we should think about this and how we can provide this um, component so that um, we achieve the goal of the education system as well. And the final thing I would like to tell is that um, the pandemic have taught us that um, when the borders will, were closed and we, it have taught, uh, the pandemic taught us that we need to bring actually the, the best universities, the best uh, standards to our country. And one of the things we are trying to do, we are opening uh, branches of the international universities so that the children in Kazakhstan will have access to the, the, the best uh, universities, best education, uh, back home so that they will um, have access to that. Well, and um, just uh, in a conclusion, I would like to say that UNICEF Kazakhstan and UNESCO office has held national consultation on June 14th of this year that brought together representatives of the government, international organizations, community, schools, and academia. Uh, and discussions during the national consultation has happened across five um, priorities. And the first priority is inclusive, safe schools, focusing on well-being of their students. That includes inclusive school environment, safe school environment, and schools focusing on well-being of their students. The second priority that we have identified is learning and, and skills for life and work and sustainable development including curriculum that develops and advances skills for life. And the third priority, teachers and teaching. That includes uh, the addressing the deficit of qualified uh, teachers, provision of quality pre and in service, teacher training and professional development and teaching profession and leadership in teaching. And fourth priority is digital education that includes further training provision for teachers and school administrators and online safety. And finally, fifth priority is financing of education. This national consultation took place in recognition of the importance, important role that education plays in human rights and foundation for peace and sustainable development. The consultations took place in anticipation of transforming education summit in September of this year convened by the UN Secretary General. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. So our next speaker is the Distinguished State Secretary at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development of the Republic of Serbia. And I request that Venezuela get ready. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, ministers, vice ministers, deputy ministers. My name is Anna Maria Vicek, and I am State Secretary at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development of the Republic of Serbia. And I was also the convener of the national consultations uh, that we ran in uh, Serbia as preparations uh, for this very important press summit. It is my utmost pleasure and honor to be greeting you in the name of our first First Vice President and the Minister of Education, Science and Technological Development, Mr. Branko Ružić. From April to June 2022, the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development of the Republic of Serbia has run national consultations as a preparation for this pre-summit with over 1,000 participants. Among the participants, we had teachers, uh, educators, professors, youth, students, children, adolescents, school leaders, parents, governmental institutions, non-governmental organizations, scientific community, academia, research institutes. It was a very wide national consultation process. Luckily, just over a few years ago, 
In Serbia, we had a similar national consultation process as preparation of the uh, national strategy for education development until 2030, which was adopted by the uh, government of Serbia uh, in June 2021 with a three-year action plan. So when I say luckily, we had those consultations as well, they were very similar to the ones that we just had a few weeks or months ago. Please let me mention COVID, uh, the pandemic that was mentioned uh, previously as well. It has also taught us very uh, important things, three important things. One of the important things that COVID has taught us is that education is important. Right after the health system, all eyes were pointed on education. It means that education is important. We have learned that we have much more potential than we thought. We had digital education even prior to that, but the acceleration of the system was amazing during the COVID situation. And we have also learned that vulnerable families, vulnerable children are even more vulnerable in a crisis situation. We are still in a survival mode after the COVID pandemic situation. It is really hard to think about transforming the education system in a crisis or in a survival mode. However, we have several areas that we think that are very important when thinking about transforming education. First, to further strengthen inclusive, equitable, safe, and healthy schools. Second, to enrich curricula to provide learning and skills for life, work, and sustainable development while developing competences, values, skills, attitudes, knowledge, and critical thinking. Not only relying on specific subjects, but cross-curricular competences. To have teachers step out of their comfort zones, step out of their own subjects. Third, improve the system of initial teacher training, professional development, and in-service teacher training, not only digital competences, but working on teacher-parent relationships or teacher-student communication. Four, digital learning and transformation, not only developing teachers' competences and school infrastructures, but also supporting families of poor or marginalized children who cannot afford it. And fifth, which, which was also mentioned previously, uh, to increase the financing of education system. The Republic of Serbia is committed to these goals. The, the Republic of Serbia uh, is committed to the transformation of the education system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. And our next speaker, and last on the list, is the Distinguished Vice Minister of Educational Communities and Union with the People of the Ministry of Popular Power for Education in Venezuela. The floor is yours. Ministers and other distinguished authorities, I extend to you the um, greetings of the President of the Bolivian, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro Moros, and the Minister for Popular Power of Education, Yelitse Santaella. Indeed, we are looking towards the summit Transforming Education. Transform means, in etymological terms, metamorphosis of something, give it another sense of being. And right now in a world that is uncertain and dark, we are f also in a world full of opportunities. Indeed, to transform education, we need to fight against poverty, um, inequality, particularly amongst the most vulnerable. In order to transform education, we need to transform the very structures of this world. The inequalities between rich and poor and between countries that are developing and developed and the only way 
to build a new inclusive educational model and a trans one that is transformative is to empower the people, particularly through the educational process. We can all agree that everybody deserves quality education. We need more love and we need more benefits for people in general and that can only be done through access to education. Education is a fundamental human right. It should be not be a privilege of a happy few or something that is locked away in a golden box that, like the one that may be in the safe of multinational companies. In Venezuela, we have suffered two terrible pandemics which have caused death and suffering to our people. The COVID-19 pandemic, which has infected everyone in the world, and also the imperialist pandemic that has, that has imposed itself on Venezuela through unilateral coercive measures. It has tried to destroy without success our economy, but it has caused suffering to our people. Indeed, this has impacted the wages and the well-being of students and te of, of teachers and also the well-being of students. However, this pandemic is being defeated by Nicola Madera and by our people. Venezuela is, thanks to its holistic policies at a human level, one of the countries in the world that has the lowest in the um, incident and mortality rate when it comes to COVID-19 and this one of the lowest in the world. We have quality, free and fair education at all levels in our country. Therefore, um, we are fulfilling the objectives of SDG 4. We are putting in place plans so that students want to come back to school. We are giving our support to local and community um, act stakeholders. We are promoting international cooperation and a culture of peace. We would also like to thank countries such as uh, Russian Federation, um, China, Turkey, India and many Arabic countries for their support. Indeed, we have a school um, food program that is free and it extends to 93% of children. We also have been able to provide students with six million, six million pupils with computers. We have also been able to plant over one million trees, therefore showing our commitment to the environment. And we are making, also making sure that we can... And we've also carried out a major national consultation in terms of education, in which 170,000 people participated. Students, teachers, the private sector, fund foundations, NGOs, government workers, government experts, local representatives and representatives of UN agencies in Venezuela. The results, the preliminary results, indicate that 80% of those present believe that the unilateral coercive measures have had a clear impact on, our, on us being able to reach SDG 4. But it's also believed that 80% of people also believe that the way forward is to dialogue in order to overcome these challenges. Indeed, we need to make sure that education for all is a veritable um, turning point in order for all of us to have more knowledge, more love and human happiness. Thank you. Now, please allow me to give a warm thank you to all our speakers this evening. Your statements have been inspiring and give promise to an exciting lead up to the Transforming Education Summit in September, and not least, a prosperous path towards 2030. We have arrived at the end of our session.
The statements we have heard have been inspiring and provided concrete commitments to how to strengthen education, how to steer the digital transformation, support teachers, prepare for a more sustainable future, and unlock the potential in every person to contribute to collective well-being and our shared home. I would also like to remind you that ministers participating in the pre-summit virtually have been invited to submit a pre-recorded video statement, which will be published on the summit website. Thank you all for coming to this session, a session which I think has set the tone and paved the way towards the Transforming Education Summit in September. Thank you to our ministers for being here with us today at UNESCO. Let's join hands, those of us that are here, in applauding their commitment and hard work. Thank you all.